No surprise, NBA 2K waited till just last minute with less than two months before release of the game to finally give us some news, but from release dates to cover athletes to next gen versus previous gen to cross play, there's a lot of news 2K just dropped about the upcoming NBA 2K22, and it seems like they're back at it again, so let's get into it. If y'all new to the channel, man, be sure to subscribe. My voice sounds a little different. I'm sick. Forgive me. All right, so let's get into it. Let's not waste any time. Well, NBA 2K started the day by announcing the cover athlete for the base version of the game, which is Luka Doncic. A few weeks ago, I dropped a video uh, basically diving deep into whether or not Reddit really had as much power as people say they do over the development of NBA 2K. And I came to the conclusion, if Luka becomes a cover athlete, Reddit holds all the power. Guys, Luka became the cover athlete. Reddit does hold all the power. In my opinion, I love the vibrant colors. I love the fact that they went with a young superstar. I don't mind the cover. Now, is there fans that made better covers? Absolutely. But is this also a good cover in my opinion? Yeah, it is. Well, then they didn't hold back much because they dropped the Legends cover as well, including Kareem, Dirk Nowitzki, and Durant. Uh, this one, not too huge a fan of, but I mean, some, some superstars, you know what I'm saying? Some all-time athletes on the cover. I don't mind. And then they followed that up with the surprise cover, which is Candace Parker on the WNBA edition celebrating, I believe, the 25th anniversary of the WNBA. I don't know the difference you're gonna see between the base version and the WNBA edition of the game but if you do want to support the WNBA I guess they know it's gonna get pressed they know it might go trending if they do it because it's the first female to ever grace the cover of an NBA 2k game 2k is good business decision good PR decision everybody's happy of course we then saw the cover athletes react Luca says huge honor to be on the cover of NBA 2k 22 thanks NBA 2k Dirk says not sure who these other guys are but huge honor to be on the cover of 2k 22 and KD said honor to to share the NBA 2K 74th, 75th anniversary cover with the greats. Kareem went on a whole tangent, and Kenneth Parker also mirrored the same. So then I thought maybe the news would be done, but 2K did continue, and they gave me full-on blue balls because they dropped this here teaser. I'm a walking triple double. Watch me when I run. You might have thought like, Agent, why did you pause it? Something was gonna happen. Nothing was actually gonna happen. That was the entirety of the video. That's actually on par for some promotional thing they're doing to launch NBA 2K22. I mean, I saw content creators like Jay Cannon to say anyone anywhere can be the NBA 2K22 cover star. Stax also saying something similar. Anyone anywhere can be the NBA 2K22 cover star. I guess, I mean, they're trying to make it all inclusive. Ah, okay, 2K, does it get me excited about the game? No, sure, that's the way you wanna go with it. So I actually wanna get something correct that I had a misconception about throughout the course of the NBA my nose is clogged right now. Do I? S Hi guys, do I sound like this? Jesus, man. Let's clarify something real quick. I was under the impression that 2K21 Next Gen between the current and next gen version of the game just sold poorly. And that's mainly because we saw reports like this saying NBA 2K21 sells 8 million copies despite $70 price hike. So the game is more expensive than it's ever been. That's before you even jump in and deal with the microtransactions. They sold 8 million copies. Now this was reported in February. I thought 2K was panicking because the game wasn't selling well, yada, yada, yada. Turns out... That's not the case. Check this out. So this is a 2K22 sales at 8 million, and this was launched in February as well. So at the same time in February, both games, 2K20, which sold well, and 2K21, both had 8 million. Now, we don't have any updated reports since that report about 2K21, but if we look at this tweet here, Daniel says, NBA 2K20 has sold 14 million units, and net bookings have exceeded more than 1 billion since its launch. So if 2K20 had 8 in February, 2K21 has 8 in February, you could reasonably expect 2K21 to be around the same ballpark as 14 million units. That, on top of the fact that it's more, the game has been more expensive than it's ever been, 2K might have had another career year. Back to back to back to back. It's like they can't miss. So uh, there's different versions of the game and 2K Intel dropped some screenshots here to clarify. The base version of the game, you get the base version, 5,000 VC, 5,000 my team points, 10 my team promo packs, and then yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But for the Legends Edition, you get the base game, 100K VC, 10K my team, points and 10k my team tokens a whole bunch of cards promo packs and packs and boosts and boosts and cover athlete shirts i mean there's a lot of different bundles and you kind of have to decide which version of the game you want if you even want the game at all but power helped clarify on twitter that's what he said here's what i'm understanding so far nba 2k22 cross gen is the best for people playing both gens nba 2k22 75th anniversary edition is good for people playing both gens and or people who play my team and want extra bonuses and it seems like 2k is doing their best to diverse 
diversify internationally now because it's no secret 2K has a Chinese version, Korean version, English version, Spanish version, and I also heard Japanese version of the game. All of those games have different covers and that, that would just sell well and you know, just like movies, when you release a Marvel movie, it's not gonna release the same in China or in Russia as it's gonna release in America because those markets aren't the same as this market. 2K knows that, 2K is doing their best to appease to each market. 2K is also owned by a Chinese gaming giant, Tencent Games. So if for those who don't know, 2K is pretty invested in like the Chinese Chinese basketball market already. So it's no surprise to see at least a Chinese version of NBA 2K. Power then got on Twitter to also explain, I think the demo is not releasing in Asia. I found the demo Q&A and they said the demo is going to be released. However, this question is only found for countries in Asia. There's no question or answer on other countries except Asian countries, just something I noticed. I love, hey, shout out Power. I'm gonna leave his link in the description, bro. Because I, I just from scrolling, I was reading a whole bunch of rumors saying that there's gonna be no demo at all. But I think it is important to provide context that this is not the case for all regions we don't know if it's for all regions yet there might not be a demo there might be a demo but it's too early to say confirm that there's gonna be no demo and this is actually the post in question that everybody's been talking about will there be a demo version of NBA 2k 2k 22 this year the answer is no although the demo version is regular content released by NBA 2k we decided not to release the demo version this year but instead focus on creating fully functioning games of this generation and previous generation so I mean the chances that there is a demo isn't a demo I personally don't care about the demo too much. As long as they're focusing on the full game and when it comes out, it's nice and clean and polished. It ain't gotta be perfect, but it has to at least be functional, then I'm happy. I know, guys, my bar has gotten so low. I'm, on, I'm, I'm aware, I'm aware. Uh, so the news continued. It's been a flurry of news today, ladies. If you like, enjoyed the video, man, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's a question that was asked and an answer that was given. It goes like this. Will there be any cross progression or cross play between the different versions of NBA 2K22 or the modes? There will not be cross play between the different consoles or PC. There will, however, be cross progression in my team across generations of consoles. I don't know where this screenshot was gotten from, but let's rock with it and assume it's correct. This has been the case for NBA 2K21 next gen. This does hint to the fact that there might be a different experience on current and next gen between the city and the park or whatever they decide to call it. But the my team experience will likely be pretty much the same. Also, I made a video a couple months ago, I mean, and y'all subscribe, you put on notice, you know, about crossplay and why it's unlikely 2K will go in that direction. They most likely will eventually, but right now they actually aren't incentivized to do so because it doesn't make them any money. It actually costs them money out of pocket to make crossplay happen. It's not that the technology doesn't exist, it exists and they could implement it in the games, it would just cost them money. And uh, what do we know about 2K guys? Are they gonna do something just because it's the good, the right thing to do? No, guys, they want to be paid to do it. Like, I'll leave that link at the top of the description. At the end of the video, I'll leave an end screen if you guys want to catch up and watch that full video. I'll say this, 2K, the problem with next gen wasn't that the gameplay was horrible. It wasn't great. It was mid. It just wasn't fun to play. Like, you had to make, inject some fun into the game somehow. I don't know at what point in video game creation we just forgot about the fact that the game has to be fun. I think it might be tied to the fact that 2K is trying and get closer and closer to, like, a realistic basketball experience. And it's like, it's a video game, though. You want it to look like real life, and to a certain extent, simulate real life but it's a balance you also want it to be fun like you don't actually enjoy war but you enjoy playing call of duty right there's a difference you, you gamify it and make it fun so that the experience is enjoyable so i mean I, as long as that's the focus and i hope that's the focus with 2k22 i think everything's gonna be cool again i wouldn't keep my hopes up personally because i've been making 2k videos since mm, 2k15 now it's been a while and i just know i wouldn't let myself down knowingly we've seen some great 2ks like 19 and 16 and 11 and we've seen them. We've seen some 2Ks that were on the brink of being nice and just didn't have that final push. And we've seen some abhorrently garbage, horribly embarrassing AAA products. We've seen them all. So I'm kind of going into this with no expectations. I'm trying not to fall for the hype because inevitably 2K ends up getting me hyped every single year. I mean, they're good at what they do. Like, how could you not be excited after a horrible, dry, garbage year of 2K? You're going to want to be excited about the next game because by default, you're just looking forward to something. I also want to say, I've been scrolling through the comments on these different posts that 2K's been making to see what other people are saying in the community. A lot of people is asking for old stuff back. And while I do agree, if something is doing well, don't change it. Like, keep it the same and add to it, maybe. You, everyone asking for affiliations back and this, back and that. It's like, y'all keep wanting to go back in time, but that stuff gets old after a while, too. You can't just keep the same stuff. You have to add on top of it. So I also allow 2K an opportunity to try something new, knowing that even when they do try something new most of the time, 
they fall flat on their face and it usually doesn't end up working and it goes horribly. Some of my favorite modes that I enjoy playing right now is because 2K tried something new. My park in 2K14, my, my player in 2K10, the crew in 2K11. 2K, you talk a lot about innovation. I want to see it here. There was a video I reacted to from an NBA 2K dev about like two months ago. And in the video, he explained that the first year of a next generation is like so much new technology. It's impossible to get it all. But on the second and third year, they fine tune it to make it perfect. Not perfect, but as good as it can be to, uh, to optimize for next generation. So it's been a couple years now, guys. Next generation technology has been out. I feel like there should be no excuse for this game dropping in the same condition that 2K21 Next Gen dropped in. For those wondering the release date, 2K has officially announced that the game comes out September 10th. I'm not sure if this applies to both current and next gen. I don't think so. I feel like it'd be a crazy decision to drop both of them on the same day. This might just apply for current gen version of the game. So I guess we have to await to see what the next gen launch date is gonna be possibly in November maybe late October so financially 2k is better than it's ever been and in a great position to capitalize on the next year but in terms of just the community 2k this is like I will argue and a lot of people will argue a make or break it year uh, it would be nice to see some support all year round for the devs to not just vanish once the game launches I think everybody watching this video fully understands that it's probably really challenging to, to develop a triple-a game from home in during the Rona, with all this going on, next generation technology, all kind of different supply, like people can't get access to consoles. We know, like there's plenty of different challenges stopping you or getting in the way from you polishing up the game. But also people are buying the game for now an all new high of $70. And then once they get in the game, they drop another 50 on their player and 50 on packs and 50 on a new player. And it doesn't end. When you drop so much on a video game, you just expect for it to be playable. And for the first month of 2K21 next gen, it was not playable. So I'm excited to see if this game comes out twice like it did this year. I'm excited to see when that happens. If both games can be good, if only one's gonna be good, I'm excited. I'm excited that I don't have to play 2K21 next gen ever again. Dry game. For those who don't know, there was a report when they dropped the city last year that to Ronnie already confirmed that they were going to be working on the city and just making improvements on it for next year, which makes sense. Uh, the likelihood that they would drop like a map that big and just give up on it after one year is low. So we can reasonably assume that the city is going to be back for 2K22 based on the information we had last year. But again, it's Ronnie 2K and he's capped plenty of times previously. So I wouldn't say nothing is confirmed, man. That's all the news we have, ladies and gentlemen. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. There's a video right here if you guys want to know why crossplay isn't going to be in this year's NBA 2K, but why it might be in years next. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.